Hello, everyone. I think Amanda and Adrian's internet dropped. Hopefully, they can pop back on for the last 15 minutes. Sorry about that. It's the, the new Zoom normal. Oh, I see Amanda in there. Um, Amanda, did your internet drop? Okay. I have no idea what that was. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It happens. Didn't oh, I say it here? The retrograde? I said it. I said it. <laughs> well, people uh, are coming back in, so um, we don't have the chat anymore. Um, that's probably uploading to the cloud, but, you know, people can still put their questions in, and yes. we've got 15 minutes. To ask, what type of support or opportunities do you think larger universities can offer for those folks that are maybe working and doing a PhD and have families and other things? So what type of supports or things can these larger institutions provide or work um, that would help doctoral students specifically? Well, I mean, I think that you, you can always offer your time. Like, I, I don't know how it works at larger institutions, um, but I, I, for, for me, it just made sure that they know that I am there and that I have the time to meet with them um, because of the fact that they seem, there's, like we mentioned earlier, they're in different pockets, right? Like they're, they're in different departments, different pockets, and, and they could be at different campuses. So I tried to make sure that they knew that my schedule was available um, for them, that I could meet them at any time um, and really figure out what they needed. I think since you're, most of you are at larger institutions, you can offer, you know, maybe you can offer funding for them to do something, um, for them to present at a conference. Maybe you can, um offer them um maybe you can connect with the with your education center if they need babysitting services that's something that we have um at our institution it's um we have a, a school that the scholars can use um i mean there's so there's so many things that i think that you can do with with much money you know we're kind of bootstrapping it here um you can, I, but i think one thing you definitely offer them is funding and your time, if you have it. So if you have um, access to the, repo the repository, let them know that they're eligible for that. Um, if you have extra funding, which I know we're all cash strapped, I would see if you could get them to maybe help you with a grant for the library, right? Like maybe based on their research, is there something that they notice is, is missing from the library services? And maybe you can work together on that because that looks good for both of you, right? Especially if you're on the tenure process, you can help them with their tenure process. What does that look like? Now that they have this doctorate, um, what are they gonna do with it? Um, the repository, Angela, that's just a, that's a big wish. We, we've uh, talked about that for a while. We do have an archive as well. Um, and we have the Beswood um, collection, which are the old Hollywood films. So what we're really saying is that we need, we, hey, we need it for the students. We need it for everything. Um, but the, the college is very hesitant on any repository right now. So um, yeah, that's what we really need it for is for the archives. And what we're hoping to piggyback on is um, student research. Um, Jen, I think the there, it's recording, so it'll be in two parts, unfortunately, but you should receive the recording later, I believe, or it'll be posted. Any other questions? I don't think Adrian can get back on. I think something just blinked out. Oh, 
they have their own group. So Adrian places them in a group based off their degrees. And then they come to us individually if they want extra support. And we also have like the workshops and all of that fun stuff. Um, so I think that they're getting most of their support from us or now that they feel empowered, they are asking the librarians at their own institutions for their, their research institutions for that assistance. Um, but they are very much connected to one another because they are in those individual pockets. So I believe that, oh gosh, I think, la was it last year? The, the months are running together, but <laughs> because of Rona, we had four or five graduates that were in EDD programs in education. So they all worked together and they all supported each other. But we also have two people, yeah, we have two people who are in finance but they're not at the same institution, but they're, they're working together and they're supporting each other. we haven't um this is really just our our own thing right now um, i'm sure we could work with bucks county which is our closest neighbor um we don't really work with a lot of other institutions um we sh probably should we're we're a little too isolated i think sometimes so that's a good that's a good idea and i'll talk to adrian about it um and i we don't call them adjuncts um, we call them part-timers. So I was a little bit confused when I read that. I was like, adjunct, who's that? Yeah, so <laughs> we we definitely work with anyone who wants to work with us. We're not exclusionary at all. If someone says to us, we want to work with you, we'd be like, yes, do it. Let's let's make it happen. Um, so our, and, and that's the reason why we wanted to open the faculty development series to everyone because we had um, staff members who weren't included in that and couldn't present in that. So that's one change, one positive change we made. And we hope that anyone um, who is part-time working for the college, um, they don't get 100% funding for their um, doctoral degrees. So they would only get like 75%, I think, or 60%, I forget, um, or maybe no. If they're staff, they get 80%, I think. If they're faculty, they get 100%. So we're trying to work that out for everyone. It's, it's a little bit complicated just because of how, the, how our contract is. But everyone is welcome. And first we're gonna do um, a lecture series. So the conference is gonna be later on, like once the college forks out all the money we want. <laughs> um, but the first thing is gonna be the lecture series. Um, and that's what we're, we're focusing our time on with faculty development. And the person who runs faculty development in our, um, at our institution is very nice and very helpful. So we've been working on that. I'm sorry the chat didn't save. It'll be open for everyone. So what we hoped um, was that we'd be on campus and everything would be sunshine and rainbows, but uh, it, we're going to have to probably do it virtually for now. Um, and we will try to open that up. Our institution is very weird about Zoom. Um, they really only want MC3 people in the Zoom. So we'd have to get permission to open it up, but hopefully we can open it up so that everyone can come and see what our scholars have done. Yes, yeah, so we're hoping that this gets picked up for a book chapter for um, the anthology that's coming out. I don't know if I was supposed to say that. Um, yeah, anyway, it's out the bag. Sorry, y'all. Um, so hopefully <laughs> we can present it there. Um, and Adrian and I will be working on that together. Um, the other librarian that helps me with the foundations of this, um, 
said that uh, she's not interested, but she's still helping with the uh, with the program. So we may do an article or something, all, all three of us, but the book chapter would just be Adrian and I. Yeah, PhD students are everywhere. You may not know who's, who is a, um, who's at a CC, you know, who's working at a CC, who's taking classes, because we have so many classes, right? And we have so many programs, so many certificates, so many everything. And, um, you know, I think when, when I think about it, you know, we say that we're a small institution, but we have 20,000 students across three campuses. So in actuality, we're not small, we're, we're actually pretty big. So we have to really consider that there are that these students are multifaceted, right? From age, I think the youngest age we have at, at, a, at the college is 14. I think that's right. And I think the oldest is like 90. That's a wide range of people, right? Across 20,000 students. Okay, well, if you don't have any more questions, I don't want to keep you because it's lunchtime over here. Um, but thank you so much for attending and coming back mm -hmm. with our shenanigans. But thank you so much, everyone. And Adrian says thank you too. She couldn't log back in. Yes, thank you. Thank you to, to both of you for this great presentation. Um, just a reminder, um, you've got a, a, about a week's more of sessions, so sign up for anything that looks interesting and hope to see you all again at another presentation. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.